tell us about our patient Gary and the situation. Yes, so Gary was a patient of mine and he got referred to me because he was a musician, played the harmonica, and um, he also had a lot of anxiety, anxiety, a lot of agitation, things like that, um, some pain management as well. And his nurse requested I do a visit and um, I had the opportunity to listen to some of his music he recorded prior to going in there, so I had a sense of just how great of a musician he actually was because I am not a fan of the harmonica. And what he did with the harmonica was exquisite and some of the most beautiful music I've heard ever in any possible genre. So I um, got called in for a visit earlier than I anticipated on the day of my visit because he had a rough night the night before. He was agitated, he was anxious, he was, he was a mess. He, um, the nurse wanted me there, well, she, this nurse I work very closely with, and she wanted me there to help manage his symptoms. So by the time I get there though, thankfully the medication had done its job and he was very calm and not super responsive, but I still did some music because people can hear until the very last moment. So I knew he would hear me get acclimated to the sound of my voice, the guitar, things like that. Um, and I had an opportunity to meet the wife and um, get to know her a little bit as well, build that rapport. The one thing I noticed though, while I was there with the nurse, um, was that he had some incredible periods of apnea. And I looked at the nurse at one point when his wife left the room and I said, are you seeing what I'm seeing? And she said, I am, I doubt he'll make it through the night. And I said, okay, good to know. And um, I did set up a visit with the wife for the following week, not expecting at all to be able to make that visit. Um, but sure enough, as is the case with hospice, everybody defies us and next, he was there the week later. And of course in this visit, the wife said to me, oh, he's done great, he's really awake today. Um, he even ate a little bit, he hasn't eaten in days. And of course that is that wonderful cue for us for a rebound and we said, okay, great. So um, he was sitting up in his bed and super awake and so I just started playing for him. And I played again the music that had been on his um, CD that he had recorded on. And then out of nowhere, he looks at his wife and he says, I want to play the harmonica. And she looks at him and she says, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and he says, I want to play the harmonica. So when you are as an established harmonica player as he is, you don't just have one or two, you have cases of harmonicas. So she went downstairs and brought up a case which had four of them in there. And um, he reaches to grab one of them and the wife helps to figure out exactly which harmonica is the right one for him. And he grabs one and I see what key it's in and as they're trying to figure it out, I start playing. And I just sort of wait, see what's gonna happen. And he's trying so hard to bring it up to his mouth and he barely can do it. And it mostly, his left arm is working pretty well but his right arm is just awful. He's got some kind of sore. We don't really know what was going on. It may have been another cancer. We don't, I mean, who knows. Um, and so he couldn't lift it up and even as high as my shoulder is right now. And he was trying so hard to use both hands to play because he had a fancy harmonica and that's how you could change and make chromatic and all kinds of fancy things that I'm never going to understand. <laughs> Um, so I just started playing while he, they were trying, he and his wife were troubleshooting how to play it, and um, this was the song I did. Some, some him and he was struggling and there, he just could not physically bring it up to his mouth so I brought it up to his mouth and I held it there for him and this harmonica was probably weighed 10 pounds I mean I was shocked by how heavy it was and I brought it to his mouth and he just started to blow and the man could barely talk but he found the air to be able to play and the next thing I know he's moving it or he's holding it and I'm moving it to help him adjust pitch and he starts going mm -hmm. And he played all of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I just sat there, could not believe my eyes. And then he goes, I want a different one. 
So we help him to get another harmonica. In the meantime, I sent a message to the nurse and I said, you've got to get over here. I knew she was planning a visit anyway. Um, and what the wife and her brother were able to do is prop his arms up so I wouldn't have to hold the harmonica for him. He would be able to do it himself. And he was mostly relying on his left hand to hold it to his mouth because, again, the right hand is just too painful for him a right arm, I should say. And um, so we picked another key. So then I said, okay, well, based upon the key of the harmonica you have now, let's just see what happens. So I started just a standard blues riff. I said, all right, why not? Let's have some fun, right? The next thing I know, he's just improvising with me. And he just goes to town. And I follow his lead. And we're just rocking out. And this probably, we went through this for probably five minutes. I mean, it was unreal, and the musicianship that steer was, still was clearly so there was beyond anything I could have possibly imagined or have experienced at any point in my career. I mean, this I've done been doing this for 13 years, and this was, out of, I mean, I have no words to describe the beauty that just happened. And his family, um, so the brother-in-law was able to record it and then send recordings or that recording to his family so that everybody could see. And they referenced just how beautiful it was when I played at um, his funeral and just thanked me so much for giving them that moment, which was out of this world. And my favorite part of the entire visit is as we finished doing this, his wife had come back and was sitting next to him in the bed. And he looks at her and just says, can I have some whiskey? And he, she goes, wait, what? <laughs> You don't even like whiskey. And he goes, can I have some whiskey? <laughs> and she looks at the nurse, and the nurse looks at her and says, it's fine. A little bit's not going to hurt him. So goes downstairs, and she says, well, I don't have whiskey, but I've, I've got something. So pours a little drink. He sucks that down so fast with a straw. <laughs> it was like he hasn't had that. I don't even know how long. And at which point, then he also falls, um, falls asleep by the end of my visit. But his wife just looks at me and says, I can't tell you the last time he played the harmonica. And we just sat there in the moment, relishing in that. And a week later, I went to visit with him again. Um, he was very much actively dying at that point. And later that night, he passed away. But it was a brilliant part of what I get to do every day. That was good. I'll do the blues with you any day.